We are so excited that you're joining us for our online services here at West Valley Christian Church. My name is Rob Denton, and I have the privilege of being the lead pastor here at this awesome church. We are so glad uh, to have you uh, for our worship and for delving into God's Word. And I'm praying that you've prepared your heart for uh, this time. God bless you, and uh, we pray that uh, this service will fill your cut. Welcome, West Valley Christian Church. We're happy that you decided to join us for worship. We've got our wonderful team here to sing and lead you guys. So please join us as we sing. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Savior is done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, we will, oh, forever, you conquer the grave. You fear free captain.
I've carried a burden for too long a mile. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation. And I see it now, laying it down, and I know that I need you. Run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. And my heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Whoa, 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 whoa. You saw my condition, had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption The price of my heart And I don't have a conscience For that kind of love I don't understand I can't comprehend All I know is I Long before my first breath, running into your arms is running to life from death. And I feel this rush deep in my chest. Your mercy is calling out just as I.
As we continue in this time, I wanted to share with you all a scripture. Romans 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper form of worship. We're going to learn a new song today. And this song is all about surrendering every aspect of our lives to God and saying, Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life. Let's sing this out together.
Sometimes the greatest heroes may never even say their name. Thank you, Brandon, and the rest of the worship team for leading us in an amazing time of worship. I just have to say, say right out the gate, uh, I miss Brandon, uh, you and I ministering together on Sunday nights at 5 o'clock, what we did for so many years, and I look forward to getting back uh, Sunday doing that. But again, thank you to our, our worship team, and we're so blessed here at West Valley Christian Church with so many great worship leaders. Well, today we continue our series, Unnamed. And we're in a series that basically looks at ordinary people doing extraordinary things for God. And we have no clue what their names are. In review, the very first week, if you weren't with us, or even if you were with us and you just kind of forgot, we looked at a story of a girl, uh, a young servant girl that's found in 2 Kings chapter 5. And uh, we learned of unexpected grace through her story. Then last week, Pastor Don did a great job uh, telling us about the story in Luke chapter 2 with the unnamed shepherds and uh, the unpolished faith that they had. So today, uh, we're going to be taking a look at unnoticed generosity. And uh, we'll be taking a look at a lady that is going to be sharing that with us. So before we do that, let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for this opportunity to to pause and to to reflect and to dig into and, and I hope be challenged by your word today. God, I'm praying for my heart and I'm praying for each heart that is listening to your message. God, that we would align ourselves with you, that we would put aside any distractions and be able to to focus and to hear what you have to say. God, again, thank you so much for each and every person that is listening. And it is my prayer, it is our prayer, God, that we would be better because of uh, spending time with you. Lord, we pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. So right out the gate, if you're taking notes, I want you to write down our first point. And it is getting attention, getting attention. Now, I don't know where you're at on the spectrum of, oh, I'm shy and I don't want anyone to know, to, hey, look at me. I don't know where you fit in all that, but I'm just going to make this statement. All of us want attention at one level or another. Think about uh, this, and I'm, I'm going to come from the, the, the perspective of a father, and I have two boys. Uh, one is uh, 13, and one's 27, and uh, I, I just recently took uh, the two of them uh, golfing uh, to the range, and we're out there uh, hitting balls, and I'm behind both of them. But throughout that session of hitting balls, they're both of them, the 27-year-old and the 13-year-old, any time they were to hit a good shot, immediately they kind of look over their shoulder to see if dad saw that. Or you'd hear a, hey, did you see that one, dad? Now, I'm not calling them out for being bad. I guarantee you I'm the same way. But the truth is, we, we don't mind being recognized. We don't mind being seen. And so I... Uh, I was thinking about an episode and uh, the TV show Seinfeld. Raise your hand if you're a Seinfeld fan. And again, I know I'm dating myself, but uh, some of you youngins are going to probably have to Google Seinfeld. But uh, (laughs) there's always uh, some great conversations that happen at one of the restaurants uh, between George and Jerry. And so they're they're sitting there in this restaurant, picture them. And and George is is talking about an experience that he had gone gone to, if I remember correctly, like kind of an Italian deli. And and he's telling Jerry, yeah, I went into this deli. And he goes, I bought some calzones and, and I went to go pay. And I paid the guy and sitting right there, kind of kind of like a, a, a glass jar, a masonry jar is sitting right there and it says tips on it. And he goes, so I get my change back and, and the guy's staring right at me. And you know that awkward moment, he's saying this to Jerry. And so he goes, I dropped the dollar bill. But just as I dropped the dollar bill in there, the guy was distracted and it turned his back to me. 
So there I'm standing, and he turned right back at me like, thanks for nothing, guy, and I walked out. So George looks at Jerry and says, so does it even count if they don't see? Well, I wonder if we feel the same way sometimes with this topic of unnoticed generosity. Like, if we're really honest, have you even had a moment in your life or two where you've actually redone an action or an activity because that person didn't see you do whatever that thing was, and so you stopped, paused, and maybe even redid it again? You see, I think it's natural for us to crave recognition. And I'm sure all of us could relate to this, whether we admit to it or not, we could relate to having that need to be recognized. I want to go off the sermon just for a second and say this, because the rest of the sermon is going to go a different direction. But I will say it's okay to want to be recognized at a certain level and basically, it all comes down to motivation, and I'm not going to delve into that. But if we're doing things, especially being generous, just so that we get the attention, then that's not healthy. But I do think it is wonderful, as individuals, when we see other people being generous, I think it's okay for us to recognize them. I think it's okay for us to encourage them. I think of passages in the Bible like Romans. Uh, Open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verse 10. It says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And so I think it's okay for us to honor other people and recognize other people. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says this, therefore, encourage one another and be Build each other up just in fact as you're doing. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says, but encourage one another daily. So there is that part where you and I, it's good for us to recognize uh, the things that others are doing well and come alongside them and say, good job for doing that. But for us, the person that is being generous and is being unnoticed, we need to make sure our motives are pure. And I think we're going to learn uh, a little bit about this more today, which brings me to our second point. So we got that whole getting attention thing out of there to now getting God's attention. The truth is, people may not see your generosity, but God does. And I want to delve into that a little bit here. Open up your Bibles to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, and we're going to start in verse 1, and this is our unnamed hero, this ordinary person that does extraordinary things, and and we're going to see this as we read. Mark chapter 12, and we're going to start in verse 41. Jesus sat down. Do you see this? Picture this with me. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put, and he watched. Is that a little weird? Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Verse 43. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, the poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty. But she, out of her poverty, put in everything. All she had to live on. And this is where I want to dig into this story. Jesus is at the temple and we learn that he's sitting there and he's watching the crowds put their money in. I, I want to illustrate this. I, I have a little container here. I'm not saying this is what it looked like, but that's what it looks like today for illustration purposes. And the first people that he sees are are wealthy people and he tells us that he puts in 
he puts in their offering. And you can imagine the sound as all the coins are clicking the bottom of maybe this wooden box. And then he goes on to tell us, there's this widow. And she drops in a few coins. Matter of fact, the two small coins offered by this woman are called lepta, which is the Greek name. And they're only worth a fraction of a penny. And so can you imagine, remember that sound of all those coins hitting? Now listen to this. The poor widow walks up, and maybe this is the sound that you can hear. That's it. In comparison to what the rich people gave, maybe the sound of two small coins hitting the bottom was embarrassing. You see, these two cult small coins, they, they're, they're, they're only worth even, a, a, in today's, it'd be a fraction of a penny. And, and the truth is, pennies are about worthless today. I, I did some uh, studying on this, and, and uh, in the U.S., in 19, oh, not 19, 2017, we lost $69 million making pennies. We lost $69 million making pennies. Why? Because the average penny costs two cents to make. It costs seven cents to make a nickel. And so we lose a lot of money making nickels and pennies. Uh, we make up those losses on dimes and uh, quarters because of their value, and plus they're a lot cheaper to make. But the point is here, this widow, what she drops in as an offering... Is, is really has no value. It's less than a penny. And yet, if we open up our Bibles again and we look at Jesus' response to this, in verse 43, he says, Truly, I tell you, the poor widow has put more in the treasury than all the others. You see, where everyone else would have she would be seen as unnoticed or uh, unimportant, not very valuable, Jesus calls her out. And, and I wonder, I, and this is just kind of how I am. Oftentimes I'll, I'll picture myself as that person that we're reading about in the Bible. And, and by no means am I claiming to say that I understand what it's like to be a, a woman, uh, let alone a woman that is a widow. But think about that. What must she have felt that day? You know, she had three strikes against her. And because of the culture, she, she's a woman, that's strike one. She's poor, that's strike two. And she's a widow, strike three. This, in my book, equals outcast. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying what she would have been looked upon as in this culture. How did she see herself? What went through her mind every day? What, where, where was her hope level? Where was her pain? Where was her disconnect? Where was her self-worth? Well, she was able to uh, gather up enough courage to go to the temple and place a few coins Perhaps she was embarrassed at the sound. Two small coins hitting the box. But again, Jesus sees. He gathers his disciples when you read this, right? Calling his disciples in verse 43. He gathers his disciples and he wants to draw attention to this woman's actions. Jesus noticed what no one else could. The offering given by the rich was only a tiny fraction of their wealth, he says. And as you continue reading on, the, the, the fraction of a penny of an unnamed widow was all she had. Chris Travis writes in his book, sometimes the things that go completely unnoticed by the world gets God's attention. Sometimes the things that go completely unnoticed by the world 
gets God's attention. My friends, if you've not heard this from one of the pastors at our church, I, I, I want to say this. You are valuable. Your life matters. And if you feel like you've been unnoticed, if you feel like you, you are, are, are nowhere on anyone's radar, I want to say that you're at the center of God's radar. He cares about you. And I know getting attention is part of the human nature like I shared before. But I want to let you know, even if society hasn't noticed you, God does. That brings comfort to my heart. My life truly matters. Your life truly matters. Your actions truly matter. You may never make the front page uh, news. You never may not be on a, a magazine cover. You might not be in the West Valley Christian uh, Church newsletter or, or the center of attention at an awards banquet, but God knows your life is not unnoticed. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Why Jesus sat there, only Jesus knows. The honest truth, when I read this over and over again and I'm reading commentaries and going, this is a little awkward because culturally today that would not set well. Think about this. If I sat during offering time and, and, and I walked with the tray or I walked with the basket and I watched you put in whatever it is that you were putting in and I drew attention to it, that would make you uncomfortable. It would make me uncomfortable and it would just be awkward, weird, and I'd even say wrong. I've experienced this a little bit. Uh, many of you know we have a ministry to the, uh, Samoa. Love the people in Samoa. Uh, a lot of times we're in the congregational church out there. I remember some of my earlier years being out there. And, and the worship, the acapella worship in the church is phenomenal. Samoans can sing like no other. And, and the teaching's great. But what, what always caught my eye and, and kind of felt awkward was when you arrive at church at the door there's a line. And, and, and as you walk in, just before you walk in, there's someone sitting at a table and they write your name down and you give them whatever your offering is and they write that amount down. That's awkward. Should we start doing that at West Valley Christian Church? No, but that's what they did. And, and they still do in a lot of the churches out there. You know what's even more awkward? Guess what they do at the end of the service? That person gets up on the stage and they say, the Jones family gave $10 today. The Miller family, they gave $15 today. The such and such family, they didn't give today. And, and literally they announced this. Well, I think that's weird. I think it's awkward. I think it's just as awkward that Jesus is sitting there watching people and how much they're putting into this box. And I'm not questioning Jesus. I'm just saying Jesus always knows what he's doing. And he's using this as a teaching moment for the disciples. And not just the disciples, but I believe it's a teaching moment for you and I today. Which leads me to the third point. God sees the heart. I think this is what this story is all about. And we see Jesus' words in, in, in chapter 12, verses 43 through 44. This is what he's trying to teach his audience, the disciples at that moment. But here in 2020, the same principle, the same truth is good for us today. God sees the heart. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about, you got King Saul in the Old Testament had become a corrupt king. And God sent Samuel to the household of Je Jesse to anoint a new king. And if you, you turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel verse, or chapter 16, verses 6 and 7, it says this. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and, and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. Why? Because he looked strong and he looked, uh, he was handsome and, and, and everything you would imagine that the next king would be. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. What? He's, he's exactly what you would want. He's exactly what you would see on the cover of GQ, Sports Illustrated, Time Man of the Year. year. 
But the Lord says, do not look at the things people look at. Continue reading. People look at the what? People look at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at, the Lord looks at the heart. God sees the heart. And that day, even though the, the, the wealthy people, man, they were dumping the change in there and they were dumping the money in there. He doesn't call them out and put them on a pedestal. He puts this, this woman that is poor and a widow and he draws attention to her, the unnoticed generosity. The woman that probably thought, oh, this is nothing. Jesus Jesus draws attention to her as the hero. I, um, I love this story because he's drawing attention to this woman's heart, not her wealth. Which leads me to a simple question, which is not so simple. Does God have your heart? Or does greed have your heart? Does God have your heart? Or does fear, anxiety have your heart? Does God have your heart? Or does jealousy and bitterness have your heart? You see, you could agree or disagree, but I truly believe that he, if he does not have our hearts, generosity is not on our radar. If he does not have our heart, generosity is not on the radar. I imagine Jesus draws attention to this woman because she had a heart for the Lord and she gave out of her poverty. Matthew chapter uh, 6, verse 21 says this, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Did you notice the order of this? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So the front is the, is the treasure. The back, what is being pulled by the treasure is your heart. Oftentimes we think it's the opposite. We think where our heart is, there our treasure will be. Jesus draws attention to this woman's heart. which allowed for her to be generous. Instead of holding on, she trusted and let go. It's a privilege to serve here at West Valley Christian Church, and there's a lot of reasons. We are not the perfect church. Just like any church, we have our strengths and our weaknesses. But I believe one of our strengths at West Valley Christian Church is generosity. Could we do better? Absolutely. Have we come further? Absolutely. But one of our core values, we have five core values at our church and one of them is generosity. And just to remind you, or maybe to tell you for the very first time, here's our five, uh, our five core values. One is generosity. Our second core value is fun. Our third core value is excellence. Our fourth one is life change. And our fifth one is team. But generosity runs through the blood runs through the veins of this church. I may never know of your sacrifice. The staff may never know of your sacrifice of time, resources, or money. But I want to tell you this. God does. And, and one of the values that we have, uh, Pastor Glenn was this way, uh, and I'm, I'm absolutely the same way. Uh, some may not even know this. We as the lead pastors of this church in our history do not know who gives what. That might surprise you, but I, I have no idea who gives what. The front office knows. And, and that allows me to stay out of all of that kind of stuff. And so if I haven't personally walked up to you and said, thank you for this special gift or thank you for doing this, it's because I don't know. But you know what? God knows. And I know our church is generous because of where we put our treasure. And when our treasure, 
uh, is, 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 is in the Lord and our priorities are being good stewards of what it is that he's given us, whether it's time, money, or resources, then generosity naturally flows out of that. Now, there are some of us that, that need to put generosity on the radar. There's some of us, all of us, could, could always grow in our generosity. But again, why, do, why are we generous? The motive is, is it so that we get noticed? Is it so that we find ourselves in a sermon? Is it so that someone recognizes? No. We're generous out of, a, a, out of the heart for our Lord and our gratitude and our stewardship for the things that he's given us. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 puts it this way. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. I want to share some examples. And part of the reason I chose uh, these two people are there are two people at our church that have just recently uh, gone on to be with the Lord in, in probably the last uh, five, six weeks. Uh, one of them uh, comes to mind, and, and, and I know I've shared this story a long time ago, but uh, when we were to build the upstairs at our church with the, the children and the teens area, I put out a big uh, vision to the church that we were going to raise $250,000 in six weeks in cash. It was crazy, and there's a whole story behind that. And so everyone got on board. I mean, we had kids crushing cans and raising money. We had people doing odds and ends jobs. We had people sacrificing at all sorts of different levels. But I'll never forget that night. I'm standing in the lobby just before we're going to come in and worship and then give that offering uh, in a, a big treasure chest that we had set up. The two cop cars were here uh, because they believed that this was going to happen and they wanted to make sure that we were safe and protected. But an elderly lady came up to me. Her name's Helen Maines, who, like I said, uh, has, has recently gone on to be with the Lord. And I honestly can't remember her age. I, at the time, I, I'm guaranteed pro- she was probably in her 90s. And, and she says, Pastor, she had this real hard time to speak. And, and I listened in as people are all filled within that room. And, and, and she goes, I want to tell you a story. And she told me the story that ever since I had announced that we were going to do this, that she wanted to do something, but she had no extra money to give. And, and it really was on her heart that she wanted to help out in some way. And, and somehow uh, she was up in this attic and she was looking through some of her deceased husband's stuff that she hadn't looked through in years. And, and she, uh, she, she came across, uh, I, if I remember correctly, it was like a, a suit uh, jacket. And uh, for some reason, she opened it up, and and, and there was an envelope in there, and and there was cash. And I I, want to say it was like $100. And she immediately was thanking the Lord because she had been praying for some way to help out in this. And and so she came that night with this white envelope with that money in it, with just just a sparkle in her eye that she could help. And I want to tell you something, my friends, that when I started reading and studying this passage, I immediately thought of Helen Maines and that evening. And we have so many stories of people like that at our church. I was just at a, a service, a celebration of life service for a lady by the name of Danny Ode, who just recently passed away. And it was a beautiful celebration of life uh, service. But one of the things I learned from one of our other pastors is just uh, days before she was to die, as she made sure that she tithed one last time. I like that doesn't even land on this guy's radar. So that means I just got to continually grow in this generosity. But where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And again, I am privileged to be a part of a church that is so generous in so many ways. You know, during COVID, uh, I can't even tell you the amount of people that have been generous to keep, quote unquote, ministry happening here at West Valley Christian Church. We've had a few f- special projects that we've done while the, actually the church is uh, empty. The ministry's still going outside of it, but we could fix some things up that were broken. And I have not asked for a penny, but as people have heard of the need, they've dropped off special gifts. I can't tell you how proud I am to serve at such an amazing church. And what that allows us is your generosity allows us to be generous as a church. You know, we as a church, every Sunday with the offering, do you know that we tithe not 10%, but 12%? We tied 12% to our missions. And so we're able to go and help 
other people as we've been blessed. And I have a list of things that have happened just during COVID that have been incredibly encouraging because we want to be generous to our community, to our nation, and our world in the name of Jesus Christ. This, this, this generosity has been shown through our ministry in Kenya with the opening up of the church two, two weeks ago. You, the church, were able through, through just general offerings and then tithing and that money going to missions to purchase some land and to have a church building built and they met in this half-built building two weeks ago. You at West Valley were a part of that. I praise God for uh, one of the, the, actually one of the policemen that was here the night that we took up that special offering. Recently, just two weeks ago, he passed away uh, of cancer and he was a young man with a young family. And West Valley Christian Church was able to be generous with that family. Uh, with ongoing missionaries and, and with 500 meals served to the homeless, uh, partnering up with local businesses, with Angeles Christ Christian Camp, with a music intern program. I mean, the list goes on. And please hear me. It's not a praise be to us. It's a praise be to God. And I want to tell you that some of the things that you do here on earth, or maybe all of the things that you do here on earth, you may not be recognized by man, but God sees your heart and sees what you're doing. Thank you on behalf of the Lord. God wants us to practice the discipline of generosity because he longs for our hearts, not for our money. (laughs) The truth is, God, God loves a generous heart. I shared it with you earlier and I will share it again. God knows what you are doing and it does not go unnoticed. I want to conclude with this challenge. I want to challenge you to be generous in a heroic way. Like Jesus called out this widow for her courageous generosity. I would love to encourage you to be generous this week in a secret way that maybe nobody will ever know, that may always go unnoticed by humans, but not by you and your creator. Will you take me up on that challenge? I hope you're encouraged with unnoticed generosity, taking a look at this amazing story. But how will that translate out into your life? God bless you. Hi, my name is Greg. I'm the missions pastor here at West Valley Christian Church, and we've come to a time of communion. This is a moment in time we do every week where we just remember what Christ has done for us through his death, through the burial and resurrection. And I think it's something we should be remembering every day. And it's interesting that when Christ took the bread and tore it and took the juice and drank it, he was centering this symbolic message for his disciples around food. That's something we do every day. I really want it to be in my life that every time I eat, I'm remembering what Christ has done. We're forgetful people. We need to be remembered. And that's something that connects with me, that I can remember the gift of life God has given me through the food that he provides. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gift that you've provided. Lord, may we use the strength of your gift to glorify you. May we understand every day the sacrifice that you provided and what that's done for us. May we know you, Lord, in your name. Amen.
We've come to a time of offering, and this is a point in time where you can give back to God what he's given so freely to you. Over my shoulder, you can see the different ways that you can send money in, and just understand this small amount that, that he's asking of us, he's using in incredible ways, and your sacrifice is changing the world through him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, May we understand that every dime you give us, Lord, every small amount of money is a gift. And may we give that back freely to you, and may you glorify your name through it. Lord, thank you for letting us be part of that. Praise your name, Lord. Amen. Hi, everyone. I'm Taryn, a member here at West Valley Christian Church, where we exist to love God and love people. And here are your announcements. This coming Thursday, November 19th, our Vintage Group is having their next meeting. This is a great time for those 55 and older to meet for fellowship and a great message. Pastor Glenn will be speaking and it will be on Zoom. The link for the meeting will be in the newsletter. Thanksgiving is less than two weeks away and God's graciousness has given us so much to be thankful for. We are having our Thanksgiving service on Thursday, November 26th on the lawn at 10 a.m. We will have Mandy Pinto leading worship and Pastor Rob will provide a short message. This is a great way to start your Thanksgiving festivities. And those are all the announcements I have for you today. If you are new to us, we are so glad you decided to visit. And we would love for you to make West Valley your church home. Have a great week. Again, thank you for joining us today for our service. And I pray that uh, you've been challenged uh, in a healthy way to uh, be generous and know that God has got you. Um, I also want to just say thank you for all of those that came to our Celebrate event uh, this weekend. On Saturday, we had a reimagine our celebrate event and we had this big picnic with a few hundred people out on the lawn and we just were able to celebrate all the many ways in which god has blessed our church uh, through this covid season and just let you know that even the doors are closed uh, uh ministry is still open and the church is alive and well because of you and so uh thank you thank you thank you and more importantly thank you thank you thank you uh, Lord, for uh, using us and trusting us and allowing us to have a front row seat. God bless you and have a great week.